Okay, pre-cal, I haven't made a video for a while, so I've been kind of tinkering around trying to figure out stuff again, but I think I got it. Uh, my glasses, let me get those on so I could read a little bit better. So uh, here we go. Uh, actually, this is not the first page. There we go. So here we go. We're gonna be talking about matrices now. And here we go, we're looking at a, at a matrix. And in this matrix, you can see there are six elements here. And there are two rows, right? Here's one row. Hopefully you can see my cursor moving around there. One row and two rows. And there are three columns, one, two, three columns. And these elements that are in there are, they're numbers. And they are given by an ordered pair because it's rows, columns. This is row one, column one. This is row one, column two. This is the element in row one, column three. This is the element in row two, column one, and so forth. Now we can talk about the size, sometimes called the order of the matrix. And the size is always given by the number of rows by the number of columns. So this is a two by three matrix here, right? It's two rows, three columns. So this is a two by three matrix. All right, let's move on. Now understanding the, the size or order of the matrix, is going to be critically important in terms of when we add or subtract matrices. That's not until section two, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying understanding the size is going to be an important thing to know. So here we go. We're looking here. This is going to be a two by two matrix. Here's our system right above, right? It's consisted of, a, it's a two equations, two unknowns here. And so this one right here is, this is called a coefficients matrix. And the coefficients matrix you can see is just the coefficients made up of just the coefficients of so four, negative one, negative three, three. And this is called an augmented matrix. And it includes what it's equal to, right? So it's like the, it's like the coefficients matrix, but it also has what it's equal to. And what it's, this is like the equal sign sort of, but in matrices, we use a dot dot, like a colon. It's like a colon. It's not a colon, that's in the English language but it's like the colon symbol here, okay? So if we're gonna work with this matrix and we're gonna try to solve it, this is what we would do. We would, we would write this augmented matrix that represents this system of equations. <clears throat> and we would take this system of equations right here and we would write it in this fashion like this, okay? I am gonna go to the next slide, but of course you can pause and write things down if, you, or if it's going too fast. All right, and this is absolutely a review from chapter seven. These are the things you can do. Um, it is acceptable to interchange any two rows. So you can move row two to row four, row four to row one, any row to any other row. That's absolutely acceptable. You can multiply any single row by any non-zero constant. You can multiply by zero, but then it just makes you give you zero plus zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. That doesn't help anybody. It's true, but it doesn't help us solve. So we want to multiply by something that's non-zero. Excuse me. And then lastly, you can add a multiple of one row to another row. Notice it doesn't say a multiple of another row. And it doesn't say uh, subtract, just add. And you want to replace it with the latter, meaning the one that's not multiplied by something else. So if you say multiply row one by three and add it to row two. When you add it to row two, that's the row that you wanna replace it with, that operation with, okay? This is again, absolutely review from, um, from chapter seven. So I'm gonna go forward, but if you wanna pause and write these down, but you've already written it from chapter seven, here we go again. This is again, I just cut and pasted exactly what it says in chapter seven. So in Gaussian elimination, because that's what we're going to do, except we're just going to use matrices now, we are going to take it a step further and do something called Gauss-Jordan elimination. But in Gaussian elimination, we know what's happening. We're trying to make all the main diagonals one, like that. And then everything below it, everything below those main, main diagonals, we're trying to make those zeros. And how you do that, the process that you use to do that, is you try to get that first element in column one, row one, you try to get that to be a one, excuse me, yeah, a one. 
and then you wanna get everything below it in that column, everything below it a zero. Then you're gonna to go to column two, row two, and you're gonna to try to make that element a one, and then everything below it a zero. And then you're gonna to go to column three, row three, and you're gonna to try to make that a one and everything below it a zero. And you just keep repeating that process until it's all the diagonals are one, and then everything below it is a zero. We're gonna learn here in a second. That's called row echelon form when that is, but we'll get there very shortly here in a couple of slides. So again, that's the process for Gaussian elimination. You did get, most of you did Gaussian elimination twice on the test. Um, you had to do it once, you had to, but most of you chose to do it twice and that's fine, here we go. And now this is called uh, row echelon form. Here, let's go, we're gonna look at page 542. And here are the things, let me find 542. Let me hit pause while I'm thumbing through the book. Okay, I might hit pause quite a bit because I, I need to go between the PowerPoint and my projector here. So I'll see if I can do it quick. And if I can't do it quick, I'll hit pause each time. But anyway, here's what it means for something to be in row echelon form. And there's something called reduced row echelon form as well. But let's talk about what row echelon form looks like. First of all, any row that consists entirely of zeros, entirely of zeros, must be at the bottom of the matrix. It must be. So let's take a look at the examples they give us on page uh, 542. And let's look at that, just that one. Every, any row that has all zeros has to be at the very bottom. All right, let's take a look. I guess I can do it kind of quick. So here we go, let me zoom in. So here are the six matrices they show me. And the ones that are in pink that have the, excuse me, the pink entries, they are in row echelon form. The ones that are, that are in black, which is B and E, they are not in row echelon form. And you can see B violates that rule. Here's a row that has all zeros. And that row is not the bottom row. So not row echelon form. Okay, um, here it is. Here's a row, no it's not. Here's a row, all zeros with F, but that row occurs at the very bottom, D, all zeros, but that's at the bottom. Okay, okay, so that's good. Here we go. Let's look at the other thing that has to be true. The other thing that has to be true, I'm not sure where I am, I think it's here. Here we go, good. Each row that does not consist entirely of zeros has to have the first non-zero entry as a one, okay? So here's what that's saying. So let me think about what it says. Each row that does not consist entirely of zeros has the first non-zero entry as a one. Got it, okay. So as I go across, the first non-zero is a one. That's good. This row, first non-zero is a one. First non-zero is a one. Let's go to this one. First non-zero is a one. That's good. That's all right. First non-zero is a one. So that one's okay. Uh-oh, that's a one. First non-zero is a one. But this one, the first non-zero is not a one. That is not a one. So this one violates row echelon four. Okay, so there's that one. The next one, rule three, it says, for two successive non-zero rows, the leading one in the higher row, the row above it, is farther to the left than the leading one in the lower row. All right, let's take a look what that looks like. You can see the ones, as I move down, the ones go farther and farther to the right. Here, uh, okay, that kind of works here, but that's not here, right? That's not here. You, the ones are not, as I move down, it's not farther and farther to the right. These are one right above the other. This one here, there's a one. And as I go to the right, go down, it's to the right. As I go down, it's to the right. That's okay. You can see they go, as I go down, they move to the right, the ones. And as I go down, they move to the right. So there's that. There's that, right? So this one violates, as I move to the right, the next, that would have to be a one right there. 
And the last one, it says a matrix and row echelon form. It, oh, okay. This is reduced row echelon form. Is in reduced row echelon form, if every column that has a leading one, has a leading one, has zeros in every position, both above and below those leading zeros. Now, I'm going to try to find one that's like that. So here, let me go back to that. It might not be any of those. Those are all just in row echelon form. I shouldn't say all of them, but the ones in pink are in row echelon. Let's see if there's any in row echelon form. So if I go above that one, remember below and above has to both be zeros. So that's not a zero. So no, we already know that's not row echelon. So it can't be an even reduced row echelon form. If I go above that one, that's a two. That's not it. And okay, this one looks like it works. Looks like D is in row reduced row echelon form. Everything below it is zero. Everything below and above is a zero and everything below and above is a zero. So that one's in reduced row echelon form. Let's see if it says that. Um, solution. Oh, F, it says F too. I didn't even look at F. So in this one here, you can see everything below that one is a zero. Everything above and below that one is a zero. So that's reduced row echelon form as well. So not just echelon form. If anything is in reduced row echelon form, it's got to be in row echelon form. But just because it's in uh, row echelon form does not mean it's in reduced row echelon form, okay? So again, all the ones in pink are in row echelon form and D and F are in reduced row echelon form. Okay. Let's take a look. We haven't got to any examples yet. That's coming up very soon, maybe even right now. All right, solve the system using Gaussian elimination. And we're gonna start with an easy one and Gauss-Jordan elimination. We're gonna start with a two by two. I'm not real fond of this pen. Let's see how it works out. It's negative X plus Y equals four. It is 2x minus 4y equals negative 34. I just thought of something I need to do. Let me hit pause again. I want to write myself a note. Okay, I had to write it. I'm going to make up a test for a student. I need to forgot I need to do that. Here we go. Let's go ahead and write this augmented matrix here. Oops, that's not showing like I want. Hold on a second. New share, Let's see if that's it, I hope it is, that's it, okay. So the augmented matrix would be the coefficients matrix, which is negative one, one, negative one, one, two, negative four. Remember dot, dot, and it's gonna be four, negative 34. Now we're just gonna do just like we did before, just like we did before, here we go. That needs to be a negative one. So we can multiply everything in this row by negative one, take row one, negative row one, let's do that. And that would become positive one, negative one, negative four. And then I'll just keep this row the same, negative four, dot, dot, and negative 34. Next, I'm gonna keep this row the same, one, negative one, negative four. But this time I'm gonna multiply row one by negative two and add it to row two. So if I multiply this row by negative two plus two would be zero. Negative two times negative one is positive two and positive two minus four is negative two. Negative two times uh, negative four is positive eight and positive eight plus negative 34 is tw negative 26. There's that. And now we have to get that to be a one. Remember, that's the, that's the process. You need to make that a one, then make everything below it a zero. Then you gotta make that a one. All right, let's do that. I'll divide, I'll keep row one the same. Ooh. But this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide everything in row two here by multiply it by negative one half. 
So if I do that, I got negative one half times zero, zero, negative one half times negative two is positive one. Negative one half times negative 26 is positive 13. Now, that's it. That's Gaussian elimination. Now you have to back substitute. Let's do that. So you can see y equals 13. And if y equals 13, I substitute that back in. This is x minus y equals negative 4. That's going to be x minus 13 equals negative 4. Add a 13 to both sides, and you get x equals 9, right? So x equals 9. So it looks like the order pair is 9, 13. But let's put it in here and make sure we get it. Negative 9 plus 13 is 4. That works. 2 times 9 is 18. Negative 4 times uh, 13 is 42. So I've got 18 minus 42, and 18 minus 42 is 34. Yes, it is. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, that's because it's 52. Moronic. Uh, 13 times uh, 4 is 52. All right, that comes out to be right then. So that's it. That's the ordered pair for the solution, which is 9. 13. But now it says, if you look at what the instructions say to do here, <clears throat> it says solve it using both um, Gaussian elimination, which we just did, and Gauss Jordan elimination. So it's just for a two by two, it's just one more step, and that's it. So let's just take it, right? If I ask you to solve this with Gauss Jordan, it's the same thing. Everything's the same up to this point. It's just that now, we need to make that a zero. We need to make that a zero. So I'll keep row two the same. And then I'm gonna keep with row one, I'm just gonna add row one with row two. I'm gonna add row one plus row two. Let's do that. Zero plus one is one. Uh, let me keep row two. Let me just write row two, I forgot that. I'm gonna add these two though, row one or row two. So zero plus one is one. Zero plus negative one is zero. And 13 plus negative 4 is 9. There it is. X is 9. Y is 13. You don't need to back substitute with gauss jordan Not a big deal, I suppose, but it's just staring at you in the face now. X is 9. Y is 13. All right. Let's proceed to the next one, which is let's do gauss jordan elimination. For a three by three, using a matrix this time, using a matrix, an augmented matrix, that is. We get a new piece of scratch paper. And then we're going to do Gauss Jordan elimination. So this is number 73 and number 83 in your book. Let me go to those. All right, so 73, ooh, it's a four by four. Really, ooh, ooh, beautiful. Here we go. We're gonna go to a four by four, man. Let's go to a four by four. So let's write the augmented matrix for number 73. It's going to be three, two, negative one, one, zero. It's going to be one, negative one, four, two, and 25. It's going to be negative two, one, two, negative one, two. And the last row is one, 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 six. Now, before I proceed, I always like to look again, because for whatever reason, I end up going, oh, and I grab an, the wrong row or something. So it should be 3, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 4, 2, 25. That looks good. Negative 2, 1, 2, negative 1, 2, and 1, 1, 1, 1, 6. Looking good. All right. We got to make that one a one, and we can do that by just switching the rows around. So I'm going to move row one to the top. 
and just move everything else down. All right. So here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to move root. I'll move row two to row one. What the heck, right? So I will make that one a one, negative one, four, two, and 25. And then I'm going to take row one and move it to two. This would be three, two, negative one, one, zero. I'll just keep the next two rows the same. Negative two, one, two, negative one, and two. And this is going to be one, 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 and six. Okay, and I, I apologize that I write like a two-year-old. Um, here we go. Now, remember the next step is to, using Gaussian elimination, is to make these zeros. So let's go ahead and make those zeros. And I'm gonna keep row one the same, right? This is, oh, let's talk about what I did here. I moved row two to row one, and, and then this was stayed row three, this stayed row four. All right, I'm gonna keep row one the same. It's gonna be one, negative one, four, two, and 25. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mul multiply row one by negative three and add it to row two. So it's going to be negative three times row one plus row two. Let's do that. Negative three plus three is zero. Lots of arithmetic. Negative three times negative one is one plus two is five. Negative three times four is negative 12. And negative 12 plus negative one is negative 13. Negative three times two is negative six plus one is negative five. Negative three times 25 is negative 75 plus zero is negative 75. All right, let's move on to the next row. This time I'm gonna multiply row one by two and add it to this row. So two times row one plus row three, here we go. And it's gonna be two times one is two plus negative two is zero. Two times negative two plus is negative two plus one is negative one. Um, two times four is eight. Eight plus two is 10. Two times two is four. Four plus negative one is three. Two times two, 25 is 50. And 50 plus two is 52. All right. And now we're down to the bottom row. And I think we can just subtract. Let's go ahead and subtract. Um, I'm gonna go row one minus row four. One minus one is zero. Negative one minus one is negative two. I got four minus one is three. I got two minus one is one. And I got 25 minus six is 19. All right. All right. Now, I think I'm going to do two rows, two steps in one. I'll go ahead and keep row one the same. It's one, negative one, four, two, and 25. I'm going to multiply this row by negative one. Because remember the, what my goal is. My goal is to make, that a, to make that a one now, a positive one. So if I multiply this row by negative one and then move it up to row two, then I'll have it. So I'm gonna write that. I'm gonna go negative row three, negative row three. And then, so I'm gonna move it, multiply it by negative one, and then also move it. So if I multiply it by negative one, I got zero, one, negative 10, negative three, negative 52. And let's keep all the other rows the same. So I'm gonna keep row two the same, zero, five, negative 13, negative five, negative 75. Boy, we're not even close to done and we're, we're going still. Um, this is gonna be zero. And, and so let's keep row five, so that's row two, my bad. And then we're gonna keep row four the same, just leave it. So it's gonna be zero, negative two, three, one and 19. Okay. So I've got that a one, these are zeros, that's a one. Now I got to make everything below it, <clears throat> that everything below that one, a zero. Let's go ahead and do that. 
So what I'll do, I'll keep row one the same, one, negative one, four, and two. Keep row two the same, zero, one, negative 10, negative three, negative 52. And I need to make that one a zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply row two by negative five and add it to row three. So I'm gonna say negative five times row two plus row three, here we go. Negative five times zero is zero plus zero is zero. Negative five times one is negative five plus five is zero. Negative five times negative 10 is 50. And 50 minus 13 is 37. And then we've got, let's see, what's the next one I'm doing here? Let me look. See, this is why it's good. I'm doing negative five times this plus the next one. Negative five times negative three is 15. 15 plus negative five is um, 10. And then times negative five is gonna be, ooh, time for a calculator. Negative five times negative 52 is 260 and 260 plus negative 75 or just minus 75 is 185. All righty, let's move on and we're gonna go to this one. Now this one's gotta be a zero as well. Excuse me, this one's gotta be, yeah. This one's gotta be a zero as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply row two by two and then I'll have two and negative two. So here we go, I'm gonna go row two by two and then add it to row four. So here we go. Two times zero is zero, plus zero is zero. Two times one is two, plus negative two is zero. Two times uh, negative 10 is negative 20, plus three is negative 17. Two times, almost got that one. Two times negative three is negative six. Negative six plus one is negative five. Two times negative 52 is negative, uh, is negative 104 and negative 104 plus 19 is negative 85. All righty now, here we go. Now this is a tough one. This is where it's gonna get very, very difficult. I'm gonna keep row, what, what's the next move? The next move is to make that a one. And it might get pretty ugly here. It might get pretty doggone ugly here, but we'll see. You think, let me just try to see if I can find a way to make that a one kind of easily. Because I don't think that's going to happen. All right. So I don't see that happening. So I think I'm going to have to divide everything by 37, and that's going to be pretty ugly, but that's okay. That's okay. Here we go. It's going to be um, one, negative one, four, two. 25. It's going to be 0, 1, negative 10, negative 3, negative 52. All right. This is going to be ugly, but you know, it is what it is. Here we go. This is going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to take 1 37th of row 3. So 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 137 times 37 is one. And here's where it gets a little bit ugly. So I've got 10 divided by 37 and 185 divided by 37. Let's hope I haven't made a mistake because uh, that would be ugly. And then I think what I'll do is I'll kind of, kind of keep everything else the same. So I'll keep row, in fact, this is row one, row two, row four. So that's zero, zero, negative 17, negative five, negative 85. Ooh, ooh, it's gonna get ugly here. Here we go. <clears throat> now I gotta multiply this row by 17 because my next goal is to make that a zero. Multiply this row by 17 and add it to the one below it. So I'll keep row one the same. It's one, negative one, four, two, and 25. I'll keep row two the same. Zero, one, negative 10, negative three, negative 52. I'll keep row three the same. 
It is zero, zero, one, 10 37ths. That's really ugly. Um, and 185 37ths. That's really ugly. And then for row four, I'm going to do 17 times row three plus row four. Zero times 17 is zero plus zero is zero. Zero times 17 is zero plus zero is zero. 17 times one is 17 plus negative 17 is zero. And here's where we get ugly. 17 times 10 37th is 170 37ths. And then we have to add it to this, which is minus five. Now, minus five is the same thing as, I'm doing 37 times five in the calculator. This comes out to be, ooh, boy, I just think I made a mistake somewhere, but let's find out. This is gonna be equal to, what did I just say? Negative minus 185 over 37, which is negative 15 over 37. Well, we're gonna find out. Whew, okay. And then this one here is going to be, um, I'm multiplying this by 17. Remember, I'm multiplying it by 17 and adding it to this one. So let's do that. If I add 17 times 185 over 37, I get 3,000. 145 over 37. And then I have to add that to or subtract 85. So plus negative 85 or just minus 85. Let's do that now. Minus 85 is 85 times 37 is 3,145 over 37. Beautiful, beautiful. That's going to be zero. Okay. I wish I, here, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it here. That's going to work out, you guys, sort of, I think. When I plug it back in, we'll see. So now it becomes, um, first row the same, one, negative one, four, to 25, second row the same, zero, one, negative 10, negative three, negative 52, third row the same, zero, zero, one, ugly, 10 over 37, 185 over 37. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything by negative 37 over 15, the reciprocal. Negative 37 over 15 times zero is zero, Negative 37 over 15 times zero is zero. Negative 37 over 15 uh, is zero again. And then negative 37 over 15 is one. And negative 37 over 15 is zero. So there we go. So it looks like, let's go ahead and call this. It's, uh, okay, this variable is X. This variable is Y, this variable is Z, and this variable is W. So it looks like W, looks like W is zero. Okay. And it looks like if I substitute a zero in for this, oh my goodness. So maybe I did make a mistake somewhere. All right, let me, let me hit pause. I'm all good, y'all, because uh, 80, 185 over 37 is five. That's where I screwed up. That's a five. So if you substitute a zero, we're just back substituting now with Gauss. Remember Gaussian elimination, all one's main diagonals and everything below it is zero. It's called row echelon form. Okay. If I substitute a zero in for this, I get zero times 10 37 is zero. That means that Z is five. And now let's go ahead and substitute back in. So the W value is zero. Z is five. Z is five. So I get one minus 50 
is equal to negative 52, or I should say uh, y minus 50 is negative 52, right? It's one y. Add a 50 to both sides and you get y equals negative two. And I'll look in the back of the book to see if this is right at the end. And then now we have to find x, right? So it's gonna be x minus y. Remember y is negative two, so it's gonna be x minus negative two would be x plus two. Plus four z, plus four z, so four times five would be plus 20. Plus two uh, w, but remember w is zero, plus two zero is zero, is equal to 25. So it's going to be x plus 22 equals 25, or x equals 3. So as an ordered quadruple, listen, I would put the w first myself. So because alphabetically is how it is. So, but I think they listed it as x, y, z, w in the back of the book, and I'm not sure why. And they even put the variables that way. That's on 73. You can see w is the last one. I'm not sure why. Let's do it the way the book does it. So X is a three, we said. Y is a negative two. Z is a five and W is a zero. And I do have it marked. So let me look. Three, negative two, five, zero. That's it. That is it, okay? These are long processes that goes without saying, okay? All right, let's look at the last one I'm gonna do. And I, I think there might be one other thing after that, but let me look. But for sure, in terms of an example here, we have to do Gauss-Jordan elimination. This one is a three by three. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do a no solution one too, but here we go, 83. So 83 is here. Maybe I'll switch over so you can see what I'm doing for number 83. All right. So it is, I'm gonna write the augmented matrix for that. So it's gonna be negative one, one, negative one, negative 14. It's gonna be two, negative one, one, 21. Now remember, you're doing Gauss-Jordan this time. It's gonna be three, two, one, excuse me, 19. Here we go. <clears throat> I need to make that one a one, right? This one right here, a one. I can multiply everything by negative one. One, negative one, one, 14. Let's keep the other rows the same. Two, negative one, one, 21, three, two, one, 19. So negative one, row one, row two the same, row three the same. All right, here we go. Now that's gotta be a zero. That one's gotta be zero. So I'm gonna keep row one the same. It's gonna be one, negative one. Let me put lines here. Uh, one and 14. This time I'm gonna multiply row one by negative two and add it to row two. So negative two row one plus row two. Negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. That's gonna be um, negative two times negative one is two, two plus negative one is one. That's gonna be negative two times one is negative two, negative two plus one is negative one. Negative two times 14 is negative 28 and negative 28 plus 21 is negative seven. All right, and finally we need to make that a zero. So, all right, well my lights just went out coming back. I, after this row, I will go turn on the lights and hit pause. Multiply this row by negative three and add it to this row. So negative three times one is negative three plus three is zero. Let me write what I'm doing. Negative three times one plus row three. Negative three times negative one is positive three. Positive three plus two is five. Negative three times one is negative three plus one is negative two. Negative three times 14 is negative 42. And negative 42 plus 19 is negative 
can barely see. Negative 23? Yep. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Um, I'm going to go hit pause and hit that, get that lights on again. Okay, much better. Here we go. Okay, the next step is to make that a one. Hot dog, it's already a one. That's beautiful. So then the next step, so I, I can skip that step because it's already a one. So now I need to make that one a zero, the one below it a zero. So I'm going to multiply this row. Let's keep row one the same. Row one is going to be one, negative one, one, and 14. Row two, I can keep the same. Zero, one, negative one, negative seven. But this time, I need to make that a zero. So I'm going to multiply this row by negative five and add it to this one. So it's negative five row two uh, plus row three. Okay, so I didn't leave myself enough room, but here we go. Negative five times zero is zero plus zero is zero. Negative five times one is negative five plus five is zero. Negative five times negative one is positive five. Positive five minus two or plus negative two is three. And I get negative five times negative seven is positive 35 and positive 35 plus negative 23 is uh, 12. All right, next step is to make that a one. So I can multiply this whole row by one third. Let's do that. I'll keep row one the same. It's one, negative one, one, 14. I'll keep row two the same. It is zero, one, negative one, negative seven. And I'll do one third times row three. One third times, ooh, sorry about that. One third times zero is zero. One third times zero is zero. One third of three is one. And one third of 12 is four. Okay, it is in row echelon form, which is what Gaussian elimination is. So if it was Gaussian elimination, we'd be done now. But we have to do Gauss-Jordan. And in Gauss-Jordan now, the next step is to make everything above here is zeros. Both of these have to be a zero. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna keep row three the same this time. So I'm kind of starting at the bottom and working up now. Before I was working at the top, working down. And now I'm gonna work from this one and make those zeros. Then I gotta make that a one, then make that a zero and I'll be done. Here we go. I'll keep row three the same, which is zero, zero, one, four. But remember, that's got to be a zero. So I can add those two rows together. Let's do that. If I add these two rows together, that's going to be row three plus row two. I'll say row two plus row three. Here we go. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus negative one is zero. And four plus negative seven is negative three. All right, now the next thing is to make that entry a zero. And I can do um, row one minus row three. Let's do that, row one minus row three. Now I don't wanna do row three minus row one because I'd have zero minus one would be negative one. So I want one minus zero would be one and that's gonna stay a one then. Let's do that, here we go. So one minus zero is one, negative one, minus zero is negative one. One minus one is zero. And 14 minus four is 10. All right, one more step, y'all. One more step and we're there. We're gonna have Gauss-Jordan elimination done here. <clears throat> Excuse me, so this time I'll keep row three the same. And you can already see Z is four, but I'll just do it. So row three is gonna remain zero. Zero, one, four. I'll keep row two the same. It is zero, one, zero, negative three. But this one, this time we have to make that one, that one right there a zero, right? So what we could do is if we added, yep, if we added these two rows up, you can see one and plus negative one is gonna be a zero. So let's do that. I'm gonna say row one plus row two. That's going to be zero plus one is one. One plus negative one is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. And negative three plus 10 is seven. 
And there it is, y'all. There's my, there it is. This is now in read, not just echelon form, not just row echelon form where all these are ones and everything below to zero. But in two extra steps, I was able to get it in reduced row echelon form, everything above and below zeros. So that means X is seven, Y is negative three, Z is four as an ordered triple. There it is. There it is, okay? Uh, let me look in the back of the book. That was 83. Let me make sure that's right. It's seven, negative three, four. Yes, it is. Okay, <clears throat> now let's take a look. We do have one more to do, and it's, it's the case where it's an undefined value and how, what that looks like, okay? All right, so it says, see example seven on page 50, or excuse me, 544. Maybe if it's already done, I can just show you in the book. Oh, it is done for me already. Here we go. Beautiful. So I'll just show you in the book what it looks like. Page, what did I say? 544. Okay. So listen, I don't know what to say. They first of all take this system, they take this system and they write it as an augmented matrix, right? So like you take the coefficients, one, negative one, two, four, dot dots for the equal signs, right? Now, you need that to be a one. So it already is, so let's just go ahead and keep that row the same. You need that to be a zero, so I'll multiply this top row by negative one and add it to row two. There it is, that's what you'd get. And then you need that to be a zero, so I'll multiply the top row by negative two and add it to the bottom row, and you would get this. And then the next one, you need that to be a zero, so I'm gonna multiply this row by negative three and add it to row three, because then I'd have negative three plus three. And you can see now, okay, one and then all zeros. What's the next step? The next step is to make that a one. Hot dog, hot dog, it already is a one, right? So that step's already done. So now I need to make everything below it a zero. Well, what I could do is I could add row two to row three. Row two to right, because then I have one and negative one. Let's do that. So I keep row one the same, da, 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 da. keep row two the same, da, 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 da. keep row four the same. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two rows so that because I'm trying to make that one a zero. Let's do it. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus negative one is zero. Negative one plus one is zero. And uh, two plus negative four is negative two. And look at what you got here. Looky, looky. You get zero equals negative two. In what universe? is zero equal to negative two, that can't happen. This is an indication here, when you get zero equals negative two, because that's just not true, this is now the situation where you know it's a no solution system. This is one where if you think of it as planes, there's no place where all three planes come together and intersect at either one single point or, well, there's other ways that three planes can intersect. But generally the ones we've been doing is intersecting at one point. So maybe this is like three planes. Remember, I showed you that before. Actually, let me find that picture and I'll stop. All right, so here it is, right? Here's the way that three planes can intersect. That's three variables, right? Not just, so one, number line, two, the coordinate plane, left and right, up and down. But we live in a three-dimensional world. So three, here it is, that's a three-dimensional plane. So you can see planes in three dimensions, as we say. So now, there we go. They could intersect at one single point. Sometimes we're trying to find that one point. Three planes can intersect. There can be infinite number of solutions. These are all three planes that are the same plane. Again, infinitely many solutions. Here's one where there's no place where it's red, blue, and yellow at the same time. So this would be a no solution situation. And again, there's no place where those three planes are intersecting where it's red, blue, and um, yellow at the same time. So that's no solution. So it's one of these situations, right? It's one of these situations like this. Um, and because we got a no solution uh, situation there. Okay, catching class. It's weird to be new in videos again. Um, over and out. <laughs>